truly legendary stadiums offer so much more than a cozy seat to sit in and watch a show. A lot of times, the stadium is the show. Check out the 10 coolest, most impressive stadiums on Earth. Since 2005, Munich's Allianz Arena has been entertaining countless German soccer fans. It's also entertained fans of pretty colors that keep changing. Even before entering the 75,000-seat stadium, Allianz Arena already entrances you with a unique glow-in-the-dark color scheme. Every inch of this tire-shaped arena shines brightly in an ocean of LED lights. Every 30 seconds, you're greeted with a new color that runs the Star Wars gamut. Sometimes you get Jedi Blue, other times Sith Lord Red, and still other times you get Samuel L. Jackson Purple. The inside of the arena delivers on the crowd-pleasing promise of the initial light show. With 28 kiosks and two full-size restaurants, the only way you'd ever go hungry at an Allianz event is if you chose to go hungry. There's a kids' club, mega store, changing rooms, and offices galore. When watching the football match from afar, you can glance at one of over 750 screens to get a clear idea of what tiny blur of a human is kicking the ball to another tiny blur of a human. Or you can just stand outside and watch the pretty light show. It may not be soccer, but it is free. If your idea of a good time is watching the game while relaxing by the water, the float at Marina Bay is for you. The field is literally built on the water, like a sports-filled peninsula. On the land, you'll find a 30,000-seat set of bleachers, perfect for watching the athletes go. And you wouldn't be watching some small potatoes event either. At roughly the size of a traditional football pitch, the float is the world's largest floating stage. The float was created in 2007, meant to be a temporary stadium until a more permanent and more traditional one could be built. However, that never happened, and the float took on a life of its own as a wonderful place to see a show. You just won't often see a soccer match there, because good luck getting soccer fans to agree that only 30,000 of them can see any given match. Instead, concerts and ceremonies galore have called the float home, including 2007's National Day Parade, the Summer Youth Olympics in 2010, and concerts by such K-pop stars as Girls' Generation. At any given time, the float could be rendered extinct by the completion of a nearby full-size stadium. Until then, sit back and enjoy the water. 2010 saw the first ever FIFA World Cup to be held in Africa. As such, the sport needed a grand arena to host the finals. Enter FNB Stadium, originally known as Soccer Stadium since its opening in 1989. Renovations and reconstruction turned the decades-old stadium into a modern marvel. People began to call it the Calabash, or African Pot, and as you can see, it does look very much like a giant African clay pot. More to the point, it became the kind of stadium perfect for hosting such a historic event. With nearly 95,000 seats, it is the single largest stadium in all of Africa. Even before its renovation, it could hold nearly 80,000 people. The biggest simply got bigger. And the shows and events FNB Stadium hosts can attest to that. Beyond the 2010 World Cup, FNB hosts a number of important soccer matches, both local and international. It's also hosted a national memorial service for Nelson Mandela after his 2013 death, as well as concerts by international megastars like U2, Justin Bieber, and Lady Gaga. In short, if people pay to see you at FNB Stadium, you're more than a somebody. You're THE somebody. Unofficial stadium nicknames sure are fun. One of the most fun is Beijing National Stadium, which almost everyone calls the Bird's Nest Stadium. It's not hard to see why. It looks almost exactly like a giant bird's nest, albeit one made out of steel instead of straw and twigs. It took 42,000 tons of steel to assemble Bird's Nest, making it the world's single largest steel structure as of its 2008 opening. This complete reliance on steel offers the potential for this stadium to safely last well over 100 years in its pristine form. And since it can seat up to 91,000 people, we had all better hope it stays safe and secure for every day of its century-long life. Complicating the goal of a 100-year-old stadium is how the area surrounding it can be less than friendly on a good day. With earthquakes a regular concern, Beijing's government demanded that the stadium be built from steel to withstand them all. However, the weather outside is frightful, dipping as low as negative 20 degrees Celsius in the winter to negative 30 degrees Celsius in the summer. Such temperature extremes can cause steel to expand and contract, which isn't ideal when the goal is to keep 90,000 fans safe at all times. The solution? The construction team actually developed a new kind of steel, called Q35. Its low sulfur and low phosphorus content can withstand both earthquakes and fluctuating temperatures, making Bird's Nest Stadium a revolutionary building indeed. Mother Nature clearly stands no chance against the tag team of soccer fanatics and engineering geniuses. 
love both football and Skyrim, then Taiwan's Kaohsiung Stadium is for you. Rather than design a traditional closed, rounded stadium, the architects behind Kaohsiung opted for perhaps the most unique design in stadium history. The walls surround three sides of the stadium field, like a horseshoe. But rather than close it in, the wall then juts out, forming what looks a lot like a tail. That, combined with the stadium's panels looking like scales or snakeskin, make the entire thing look like a dragon's tail. Or a question mark, if you're still too traumatized by the Game of Thrones finale to think about dragons. The tail doesn't just look cool, it's literally cool. Knowing how hot summers in Taiwan can get, the tail portion of the roof forms a tunnel under which hot air can pass and cool down, before entering the stadium and refreshing the 55,000 fans in attendance. Feng Shui plus science strikes again. No, not Macarena Stadium, though feel free to pause the video and dance around for a bit anyway. We'll wait. Okay, dance break's over, back to the video. Brazil's Maracanã Stadium has been around for ages. Opened in 1950 as the main venue for that year's World Cup, it is famous for holding the largest crowd to ever witness a soccer match. The 1950 World Cup Finals drew over 200,000 fans to Maracanã. How is that possible, you ask? Simple. At the time, the stadium was not actually finished. There were few toilets and much of the stadium didn't actually have seats. Luckily for anybody who wanted to watch World Cup matches regardless of comfort levels, regulations regarding standing room only crowds were lax, if not completely non-existent back then. So six figures worth of people crammed into an unfinished stadium and stood as close together as possible in order to watch the match. Let's hope they all remembered deodorant. Construction finally ceased in 1965, 15 years after the stadium opened. Even still, ungodly amounts of people crammed into the stadium on the regular to see the matches. Over 100,000 people attended a match 284 times in the stadium's history. But that hasn't happened since 1983, and don't expect it to ever happen again. Over time, more and more of the stadium received actual seating. Then, on July 19, 1992, a tragic accident occurred. An entire upper stand collapsed and killed three people while injuring around 50 others. That was enough to end SRO altogether and only allow seated patrons. Even still, Maracanã Stadium draws over 78,000 people per match, making it the largest stadium in all of Brazil. Regulations or not, Brazilians love soccer just as much now as they did in 1950. The original Wembley Stadium was born in 1923 and housed events and games aplenty until its retirement in 2000. The new Wembley opened in 2007 and improved on its parent in every way. It seats over 90,000 people, making it the largest stadium in Great Britain. But its sheer size isn't what makes Wembley memorable. The arch does that. Almost the entirety of the stadium's roof is supported by a 436-foot-tall arch that also helps to close and open the roof. Not completely, of course. Even on the worst of weather days, the pitch can and will find itself rained or snowed upon. But the roof does shelter every seat no matter what. So if you're a fan, don't worry about the elements. Plus, the roof does retract enough to allow warmth and sunlight on good days. Not to mention when the pitch needs the sun to grow properly. Given its stature, Wembley Stadium has played host to tons of important events across the nation. Its influence even expands globally. Since 2007, the NFL travels there at least twice a year as part of their international series. Thus far, Wembley fans seem to enjoy weird American football just as much as they enjoy their own. In 1957, FC Barcelona realized it needed a new soccer stadium, as their current one could only seat 48,000 people. For a soccer-crazed nation like Spain, that simply would not do. And so they built a new stadium and went as big as they possibly could. Since its inception in 1957, Camp Nou's stadium has been without question the single largest stadium in all of Europe. It can seat around 99,000 people, probably because 100,000 would be bragging. It used to hold up to 120,000 when you factored in standing areas. However, late 90s regulations prohibiting SRO sections meant that 99,000 would forever stay the capacity. Not only is it the largest stadium on the continent, but it's also the best. In 1998, the Union of European Football Associations awarded five-star status to Camp Nou. The UEFA has since replaced its stars with categories, but Camp Nou still has the highest possible designation, Category 4. Considering the stadium houses a chapel, several VIP lounges, television studios, a medical center, and even a club-centric museum, it's easy to see why. What makes this stadium even cooler is how its nickname, Camp Nou, eventually became the official name. Until the year 2000, the building was officially known as Estadi del FC Barcelona. FC Barcelona held a fan vote to determine the best name, and Camp Nou won with over 68% of the vote. Camp Nou translates to new grounds, which doesn't make much sense since the stadium is over 60 years old. But clearly, to FC Barcelona fans, Camp Nou Stadium will always be their baby. 
They say everything's bigger in Texas, so why shouldn't their football teams have the biggest stadiums of all? That's apparently what Dallas had in mind when constructing AT&T Stadium for the Cowboys. Their original venue, Texas Stadium, simply wasn't big enough. After all, it could only seat around 65,000 people. For America's team, that simply would not do. Their new stadium, which opened in 2009, seats around 80,000 people for a normal event. But its unique system, where seats are fastened together onto rails, allow for seats to be squeezed together and more added when necessary. Thanks to this innovation, AT&T Stadium can house up to 100,000 people for events such as the Super Bowl and the Cotton Bowl. The stadium itself is one of the most unique in all of sports. Two 300-foot-tall arches support the roof, which retracts enough to allow the elements onto the field, but not the stands. The field is technically below street level, so when fans enter, they get a full panoramic view of everything. And the Jumbotron is perhaps the most massive in the entire sports world. It's 160 feet long, 71 feet high, and hangs 90 feet above the field. It's so massive, in fact, that several football players have hit it while punting the football. Doing so massively screws up the player's intended field position, but the Tron isn't going away, so the players might as well get used to it. Easily the oldest and most historic stadium on our list, Athens Panathenaic Stadium has existed since 330 BC and is still going strong. It took roughly 1400 years off due to abandonment, but we won't hold that against it. In 300 BC, the Athenian statesman Lycorgos took a centuries-old racetrack and built a limestone stadium around it. 150 years later, a politician named Herodes Atticus renovated the stadium, this time out of marble. By this point, it could seat nearly 50,000 people and became the site for many major events, such as the ancient Olympic Games. Then, around 400 AD, Roman Emperor Theodosius I banned most festivals and games, meaning Panathenaic Stadium quickly fell into abandonment and ruin. It remained a ruin until archaeologists unearthed it in 1835. Quickly, Athens made efforts to rebuild it, efforts which culminated in the stadium hosting the inaugural Modern Olympics in 1896. Panathenaic Stadium is still in use today. It won't likely hold any soccer matches or major concerts, since the field is actually a long, thin racetrack rather than a wide-open pitch. However, it's perfect for events such as archery, basketball, and of course, racing. The stadium housed several events during the 2004 Athens Olympics, as well as the 2011 Special Olympics World Summer Games. Before that, the 1968 FIBA European Cup of Basketball staged its final at the stadium, where an incredible 80,000 people squeezed into the stands. An additional 40,000 watched while standing. Not bad at all for a non-traditional venue that's been around since Aesop was alive and writing his fables. 